What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Longer Ray 5. Now you may be familiar with Longer, they've been making 3D printers for a while, but they've decided to jump into the very saturated laser engraver market. There's a couple things that make this machine stand out from the rest though. So today we'll talk about those and I'll also give you a general rundown of how this thing works and what you can expect from it. Alright, first let's get started with assembly. This is one area where this machine definitely shines over some of the other ones. They have a great set of instructions, but not only that, they have individually bagged and labeled the hardware to go with each step, so it's very easy to keep everything organized. Plan on setting aside about 20 to 30 minutes for assembly. Focusing is made easy with this setup tool. You just lower the laser body until it touches the block, and you're done. They give you a few pieces of wood to use for your first test. I always like to start with my logo. I ran this at 300 inch per minute feed and 80% power. Now it's probably a good time to talk about software because you have a couple different options. Personally, I use Lightburn. It's a paid program, but at only 60 bucks, I think it's a pretty good value. There's a pretty big community behind it, and it works on both Macs and PCs. There is a free alternative called Laser Gerbil, but since I have a Mac, this isn't an option for me. If you have a PC though, you may want to check it out. You can also try Lightburn for free for 30 days. Either way, Longer has a couple good walkthroughs that will show you how to get the software installed on your computer and your machine set up and running properly. I always get asked about engraving silicone watch bands and rings. Here's a couple tests I did with a sheet of silicone. Depending on your settings, you can change the depth of the engraving. I generally keep my power setting at 80%. The more you slow the machine down by lowering the speed, the deeper your engraving will be. This will also result in an increased runtime. It's a good idea to test these out for yourself, but I'll put my settings in so you have a general idea of where to start. I slowed the speed way down for some of the silicone and engraved deep enough to make a stamp. Just make sure you have some regular stamp ink because I didn't have any and spray paint didn't work so hot. Another thing people always ask about is if you can engrave metal with a diode laser. Now the simple answer is no, but there are some exceptions. You can remove the coating from metal. This can be something like spray paint that you apply yourself, or in this case, anodizing that's on these aluminum business cards. You can also discolor stainless steel. I'll show you two examples here. This first is just with a regular stainless dog tag. It's a little hard to see, but I was able to mark it with my dog's name. For a darker finish, I recommend using this spray molly lube. Just so we're clear, this isn't actually engraving the metal. It's just permanently discoloring it. This will resist scratching, but doesn't actually remove material. This can be used on knives, watches, or anything made out of stainless steel that you want to personalize. Mostly use my laser for engraving simple stuff like my logo, but you can also do portraits. And this isn't just for small items. The Ray 5 has a 400 by 400 working area, which converts to about 15 and 3 quarter by 15 and 3 quarter inches. Its 5.5 watt laser does a great job of engraving a variety of materials, but you can also use it to cut through things like wood, acrylic, leather, and others. Let's be honest, there's a ton of laser engravers on the market, and picking the right one can be a real headache. For me, a big thing that makes the Ray 5 stand out is that Longer is already an established company. I've been running a couple of their 3D printers, and support from the company as well as the community has been great. Longer has really nice touchscreens on their 3D printers. They brought that same great feature to the Ray 5. If you don't have a laptop or just don't want to bring it to the shop, you can save your files to the included micro SD card, just like you would with a 3D printer. 
At about 300 bucks, the Ray 5 is a great starter machine, but it's also something that you can grow with. I'll put an affiliate link here and in the description so you can learn more about this machine. You get the same great price, but I get a small kickback, which helps me grow my channel and bring you more videos like this. Don't forget to click that like button and leave a comment or any questions you may have down below. I'd also really appreciate it if you could share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and until next time, here's a few more videos of mine that YouTube thinks you might like.